Hi everybody, so this is an immediate follow-up to my Dream Conference episode discussing Seth Gruber's talk on All Conflict is Theological. This is basically a letter I wrote in response to the full version of his talk that I saw at the Dream Conference. I specifically focused on his four reasons why Gnosticism is incorrect or what he calls ways to detox from it. And I'm just going to go through that letter here. I never sent it because there's no point, but I had to write it and get it out of my system, so I might as well use it for the script. <laughs> Dear Seth, first of all, I love the name. Seth, the hero of Sethian Gnosticism, Egyptian god of darkness, husband of Astarte, Anat, and Asherah. What a dope name. In your lecture on why all conflict is theological, you give four reasons why Gnostic dualism is incorrect, or how to detox from it, and claim nobody has ever provided evidence in favor of it. While I highly doubt this will reach you, let alone be read and receive a response, if for no other reason than a surely busy schedule, I figured it just may interest you. Your first point is that Gnostic dualism is subjective. Why is consciousness defining of personhood? What grounds personhood? Only what the state says? And you also seem to worry that the left is driven by this belief of consciousness over matter. So Gnostic dualism doesn't say anything about matter or spirit being subjective or one ruling over the other necessarily. Both are objective, both exist, both define the person. And this is why it's called dualism. You argue that Gnostic dualism and materialism, which is a form of monism, are somehow one and the same. And yet you come from the position of biological essentialism, which is so central to the materialistic and physicalist faith that matter defines who we are. The secular individual rejects a soul, or at least most, you know, in our athe I guess I should say, you know, an atheistic, secular, left type of person that you probably envision when you're talking about this. They don't believe in a soul, whereas Gnostic dualism does. Indeed, the left is materialistic, not dualistic. Your belief that they say the self is really just consciousness is completely reversed. They do not believe that consciousness is separate from matter, but rather that we are just our bodies, that our entire conscious experience is some sort of deterministic illusion. This is precisely why they support things like homosexuality based on seeing it as natural rather than at odds with nature. They agree with you that the physical world matters. They think things like homosexuality and transgender transgenderism are physically rooted, and that is precisely why they are real. They don't see being transgender or being homosexual as a constant choice, but as part of their true biological selves. And most of them, from my understanding, are material monists. Your biggest fear is that if nature does not define personhood, the state will. But this is, isn't the only option. The individual can, should, and hopefully will define their own personhood. Yes, it may be the state to define it. But you're creating a false dichotomy because Christian nationalism relies on this type of self-rejection and self-hatred to give yourself up as a tool to God and to see yourself as a disgusting sinner in need of savings. It is just as bad for the church to define personhood as the state. Instead, it is the choice of every individual who is able to make the choice. In many cases, it may be worse for the church to define it than the state, to be frank. Also, I agree with you that 98% of abortions are probably not moral, despite your claim that no pro-choicer would say such a thing. In 2024, there's infinite options for birth control, and abortion should not be used as such, in my opinion. I wonder what your thoughts on such a thing might be. Your second point is that Gnostic dualism is counterintuitive. You bring up a couple points. You say that Gnostic dualists must say, my body existed before I did. You say that... The Gnostic dualists cannot hug their mother because the mother is not their body. You say, which is honestly hilarious, <laughs> that curing multiple personality disorder would be genocide. And that when we get oxytocin, it creates a sense of trust. The physical causes the non-physical, which is impossible in Gnostic dualism. Let's address these real quick one by one. You say, the Gnostic, you say that I, as a Gnostic dualist, must believe my body existed before I did but it is the spirit that existed before the body. The body is the prison the spirit is enslaved in by your God. Secularism believes that the body precedes all consciousness. Your mother, here and now, is her body and spirit. Again, this is dualism, so you can easily hug your mother. To secularism and what you would call the left, your mother is nothing more than her body, thus you could also hug her. So this example just really doesn't make any sense. Multiple personalities appear to be the illusion of different people. 
We all have different conscious parts of ourselves, and some people these get split up incorrectly and cause dysfunction and suffering. Therefore, you're not killing like souls or something in a person. You're just trying to help them integrate like the different parts of their own soul, which is probably being messed with because of the brain. Because again, dualism, the two have affect each other both ways. Secularism specifically believes the person with multiple personalities is all one person because it's all one brain. Like they agree with you that biological essentialism is true and that their bodies and such define who they are essentially. And finally, that physical causes the non-physical in some cases is expected because dualism implies that both matter and spirit exist and are interacting. It works the other way as well, such as in prayer and magic, when the internal leads to objective change. So what I see here with your second objection is just a complete misunderstanding of what dualism actually teaches. You seem to have completely confused it for material monism and biological essentialism. Your third point, and the simplest to address in my opinion, is that Gnostic dualism destroys human equality. You say we do not share awareness equally, so those with more awareness or more of a person will have more rights. Now, I agree that we cannot just say someone has less rights because they lose awareness. However, humans are unequal, but for very different reasons than you put forth. For example, a person who harms children is not equal, equal to one who saves children from harm. They are lesser. You speak with disgust about those monsters which harm children, as you rightly should, but believe they are your equal, that they should have the same rights as you to follow their own heinous will. I deny this. Take their freedoms and let them never see the light of day again. I don't disagree that Nazi dualism destroys human equality. I think reason destroys human equality. And finally, your last objection is that Nazi dualism justifies killing for the greater good. For instance, involuntary euthanasia of mentally disabled patients would be justified, or killing to harvest the organs of those who have cognitive issues. Now, euthanasia is not simply about killing someone because they have lost cognitive abilities and awareness. It is generally a willful choice, freely made long before the time ever comes. A DNR order, for instance. And why should people not freely be able to move on to the next life under reasonable conditions, such as endless, excruciating pain or becoming unable to enjoy any kind of life? Why does your God demand we let people suffer against their own wishes? If you were so addicted to the material world, as the misguided pagans of Egypt and elsewhere were, then by all means, live with as much suffering as you want, or remain a vegetable indefinitely. That is your free choice to make, as it is another's to reject. The example you kill, give of killing to harvest one's organs for the greater good is a common argument against utilitarianism. That what's good for the most people is what's morally right. This is, of course, your own position and not the Gnostic one. For you believe Christianity is what's good and participated in a conference meant to force it on others, to become modern patrons of spiritual and political conquest. You reject your own position. I, a Gnostic dualist, reject utilitarianism outright, specifically because of the importance and sovereignty of the individual self. Because utilitarianism overrides the individual self and tells it what it needs. Same as Christian nationalism. Interestingly, though, you accuse pagan gods of requiring blood sacrifice, which is absolutely true in some cases, though rarely in modern times. Surely you know that Yahweh was one such pagan god. Was it not your own God who joyfully licked up Abel's bloody, bleeding sacrifice while throwing Cain's simple offering to the ground? Was it not he who told his worshippers that happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones? You rightly condemn the murder of children, yet your God murdered all the firstborns of the Egyptians for the sins of their parents, and it was he himself who admits to hardening Pharaoh's heart. Your proselytization seems to be in worship of and submission to what we would call a demiurge, the creator of matter. Indeed, you admit to the fact that the deceiver can only distort and pervert, not create anything new. But isn't this why the Greco-Egyptian magical healing staff, known to the Bible as Nehushtan, was used by your God to heal the Israelites from snake bites when he could not help them on his own? Does your holy text not turn the eternally revered serpent from religions much older than either testament into an entity of pure evil and deception? You are right about the deceiver, and yet you choose to worship him. As for why we should believe Gnostic dualism in the first place, well, the consciousness is the center of all things for each individual. It can never be otherwise, and it is distinct from and irreducible to matter or any external thing, including God or Christ. This is why materialism, the materialism of both yourself and the left is incorrect. In a way, you worship the same demiurgic God, and I do agree that we all worship something. 
Since the self and matter have mutually exclusive contradictory properties, neither can be reduced to the other. Consciousness is the only thing we know directly, and all knowledge of matter is known through it, so we can't reduce what we know for, with, directly to what we know through it. And consciousness cannot be doubted, whereas matter can. You know, you can't even argue that I, exi I don't exist theoretically, because who would be doing the arguing? And consciousness is required to know anything. I mean, how would you even know about matter or God or Christ without being consciousness? So consciousness is the central foundational thing that obviously exists separate from matter if anyone takes just more than a few minutes to think about it. What you condemn as Gnostic dualism is actually physical monism. The latter is what is what the left believes. And how is their worship of the material world and body different from your own, or your worship of a being who would create such a vile world and then demand worship and proselytization to help us out of it? Gnostic dualism is the only reasonable conclusion. If there is a god of matter, he is a malevolent, manipulative tyrant. The left rejects Gnostic dualism, all secularism does, for they believe all reduces to matter, that matter defines the self, same as you believe. You're arguing against your own position and don't even seem aware of it, while never actually discussing Gnostic dualism.